I'll be showing 25 tips and tricks in Microsoft Teams. These include new features, productivity enhancers, and some hidden gems. Because Teams is quite expansive, I've tried to group these together where possible to make it easier to follow along, so let's get started. The first feature is the number one question I get asked, which is when I'm presenting PowerPoint in a Teams meeting, how can I see the screen and everyone in it? So let's join the meeting, join. Okay, now we're in a meeting and I'm gonna show the new PowerPoint presenter view. So I'll go to the share tray and click this. Instead of sharing your desktop or window, we're gonna upload a PowerPoint into this. So click browse and upload from my computer. And we'll choose a solar system deck. Now we're in the new presenter view and you can see along the bottom, we still have the ability to see videos. They're not on right now, but all these videos would show so you could see the faces of people. The other nice thing is you can see your notes. So all the notes for PowerPoint are here. I could open up the participants pane at the same time and I can see people so I can see everything at once. You can see your slides here along the bottom. And if I can navigate forward, you can see here, now it's on slide two and I can go backwards just like I would in presenter view. The other thing is people say, what if I don't wanna see the notes? Well, if you click more actions here, I can say hide presenter view. And right there, now it's just showing the people on the bottom or the side. I could close this just like I would. And I hit the dot, dot, dot menu and I go show presenter view. If I want to stop people from their end to navigate forwards, I click this. And now the people will have to stay on the slide that I'm on. And I can uncheck that to turn it back off. The second tip is focus mode. I'm here in a team meeting and I'm an attendee and someone's gonna share the screen. So here's the content. Now I wanna be able to focus a bit more and I want those videos along the bottom to disappear. I'll go to the three dot menu and drop that down and I'm going to choose focus and that will have the videos along the bottom disappear. Okay, now those videos are gone. I can focus a little bit better. The third tip is full screen mode. I want the top bar and the bottom task bar to disappear to get even more focus. I'll hit the three dot menu and I'll go down, I'll choose full screen. Now notice how both the top and bottom taskbar areas have disappeared. I have a full screen to completely focus on that content. And if I wanna bring these back, I just go to the three dot menu and first on, I will uncheck full screen and those are back. Now I'll go uncheck focus and those come back. The fourth tip is built-in meeting options. So I'm gonna launch a meeting here and join, join now. So inside of the meeting, I can hit the three dot menu here and I can choose meeting options. Now, instead of launching out, what you can see here is I can choose anything here. Who can bypass the lobby? You know, I can say only me and I can have things about announce when callers leave or join. Maybe I want to turn that off. Who can present? Hey, it's just me and I'm going to allow reactions and I'm not going to allow attendees to unmute. So I can save all these. Now it's saved directly in the meeting instead of having to go out to meeting options. The fifth tip is one of my nitpicks is adding a picture when you have a new team instead of just the default little letters. So I'll join or create a new team here and click create team. And I'm gonna create just a generic team, give it a name, the best team ever, and we're going to make it public and we'll hit next. Now, if you see here, it just says TB and it's pretty boring. And when you have a whole line of teams with just a bunch of letters, at least for me, I can't see where it is. So I like to add a picture. So if you go here and you click the little edit pencil, change team picture. Now, if you're in Teams for Education, you'll actually have a lot of awesome choices here, but you can also upload your own. So I'm gonna upload an image and I'm gonna upload a picture of Michael Scott for my team, hit open. Hey, there's Michael Scott, hit update and check it out. Now we've got a nice team logo. The sixth tip is one I use every day for either posts or chat. So when I hit new conversation, instead of just typing, I might start typing, hey there, and I inadvertently hit enter and it sends the message like that. I don't want to do that. I want to have a little backup in case they accidentally hit enter. So I'll delete this. And now I'm going to hit new conversation, do control shift X, which opens up it's the equivalent of hitting this compose box. So now I'm typing, Hey there, I accidentally hit enter. It just does a carriage return. So it's the same thing in chat. If I go into chat and I'm going to send a message, down at the bottom, instead of just typing, I always hit Control Shift X to open this box up. So it's kind of like when you're sending a mail and you inadvertently send it, it's the same thing. Catch your message by opening up that Compose box. The seventh tip is using announcement headers when you create a message. So I'm gonna create a new conversation here and I'm gonna do Control Shift X to open it up. And I'm gonna drop this conversation and choose announcement. Now I can have a couple of different options here. I can have a red background, I can have a blue background. I can also add my own image, select a background. And if you're in education, you can actually choose an illustration. We have a bunch of fun ones here, you know, bumblebees. I can also upload my own image. So I'm gonna click upload an image and choose here. 
And I've added my own image, hit done, and then I can type a headline. Big news, exclamation point. We can add a heading. And then I can type my message into the body. So this can help get attention a little bit more when you have a big announcement. You can see another one up here, staff meeting follow-up and other information. So then I just go down here and click send. And there is my announcement message. The eighth tip is saving out your messages. So kind of like a message flag. Here's one. I want to save this hybrid training coming soon. I'll hit the three dots, go here and say save this message and it saves it up here, and I'll go there in a second. Maybe there's another one here, there's from, from Arden. I'm gonna go here and click save this message, and I'll go and I will save this one as well. So now I've saved three messages, and they always are saved here. If I drop down my profile picture, you're gonna see this saved. It's almost like a favorites or a bookmark. And I click this, and it has those three messages right here on the left. So now I can browse and find those messages, see how it highlights it in yellow here. I click on this one and it highlights that message. And then after you are done with that, kind of like unfavoriting something, I just go and check that there and click it and it makes it go away. So I can always access my saved message list really easily right up here in the profile dropdown. The ninth tip is sharing a message to Outlook directly from Teams. So here's a message right here. I'm gonna hover and click the three dot menu. I'm gonna choose Share to Outlook. I'm gonna send that to this account. I'll hit Send. Now I'm gonna sign into Outlook and show how that looks when I receive the message. I'm signed into my mic account and here's that message from Kara. There's the Teams message right here and I can even click the link and say go right into Teams. The 10th tip is the immersive reader in Teams. Immersive reader is designed to make content more accessible, easier to read and inclusively designed. It's also something I work on in my day job, so I'm a big fan. So here's a message here and maybe I have challenges with reading this message. I'm gonna to go to the three dot menu on the hover, click that and then choose immersive reader to launch it. Now you're gonna see we reduce all the distractions and this is the immersive reader. At the bottom, there's a play button so I can go and choose part of this and just read it out loud. New midterm format and timing. I am revising the midterm exam in the following ways. I can pause, I can choose the voice speed, faster, slower, male or female voice. I can go up here and I can increase spacing that helps reduce visual crowding for some people. I can change the background color. Some people have challenges reading with just a white or a black background. So this is tuned for accessibility. I can even go up here and make the text size much bigger if I want and make it a little bit smaller again. If I need extra help focusing, I go here, I choose line focus. This can help focus the eyes. Some people with ADHD or cerebral palsy will prefer reading like this. I can also change three lines or five lines. I can even do things like a picture dictionary. So if I click on book, I can read it out loud. Book, book. I can also translate. Maybe I need to translate this into a different language. We have over 70 different languages. So I'm gonna go down here and choose Spanish in this case. I'll choose to translate the entire document. And now I'm gonna read it out loud. Nuevo formato y cronometraje de mitad de periodo. So all of that is built right into the Immersive Reader. You can use it on any message in the post area. You can also use it on any message in your chats. The 11th tip is muting meetings. So sometimes you might be having a regular meeting that you're not always attending. So maybe they're meeting for office hours every single week. And all of a sudden you're not there at the meeting this time, but other people are meeting and you start getting dinged in the chat all the time. You can just go to the three dot menu here and choose to mute that meeting. So I'm gonna say mute, and it turns that to a little gray bell with a line through it, meaning, okay, I'm not gonna keep getting notified if I'm doing work and I don't happen to be attending that meeting. You know, I can go up here and I can also mute this one. The other thing you can do if you really wanna make it go away, it's like, I don't wanna see that in my chat anymore. I can go here for sync up meeting, I can just say hide, and that just hides it right away. So now I can clean this up so I don't have all these old meetings in my chat stream that might be dinging me. And then if I want to unmute this later, same thing, I go right here and I choose unmute. The 12th tip is adding apps and pinning them to your conversation. So I'm here in posts, I hit new conversation. You can see there's these little apps down here. And I'll hit the three dots and maybe I want to add a new one. First off, I'm going to right click and say pin. So now I've pinned forms. I'll go also pin, right click, Power BI. And now anytime I want, if I just want to launch a new form, I click here and here's my form, hit save and I'll send that out. So I just added a form quickly. And again, Power BI, I can just click this and access directly. And if I wanna search for Power BI apps, and I can add anything essentially to that three dot menu and pin it right here so I always have access when I'm creating messages. The 13th tip is dark mode. So I'm gonna go up here to my profile, drop this down, and I'm gonna choose settings. And one of the very first ones you see are the themes. So there's default, which is kind of grayish. I'm gonna choose dark, and I will go into dark mode much easier on the eyes, looks pretty cool. 
The 14th tip is filtering. And I'm here in chat and a lot of people don't know that you can filter. Right here, there's the filter button. I'll do control shift F as a shortcut. Now I can filter by name if I'm looking for something. So if I'm looking for Ella, that's really quick and easy. But the one that's kind of cool is being able to filter with the three dot menu here. So I can filter by unread messages. So those are all my unread. I can go here and filter by things that are just meetings. There's my meetings. I can even filter by things that are muted. So if I've muted some of these meetings. And if you have a lot of different chats, this filtering can be really helpful and a good time saver. The 15th tip is getting an email address to a channel name. So I've got a data analysis channel here and I want to actually send a mail to someone. So I'm going to hit the three dot menu and I'm going to choose get email address. It pops up an email address. So I can just hit copy now and I can switch out to Outlook and mail that to someone. And when they get the link, it'll open it right to this channel. The 16th tip is setting channel notifications. So maybe I have this logic puzzles channel that's really cool and I'm gonna hit the three dot here and I'm gonna to go to channel notifications. Now by default, it's gonna be custom, which is if you reply in here and you add a message and other people reply to that thread, you'll get notified. Maybe you're like, you know what? This logic puzzles get so many notifications. I just wanna turn them off unless they at mention me. But then there's also, and I have a couple channels I work with where I wanna know anything that's happening in that channel. I'll set to all activities. So now that means any post, any ad mention, any thread, anything in that channel will show up as a notification in my activity feed. So I will turn that one on for channels that I really care about. And maybe again for physical simulation, I don't care anything about that. I'm just going to say off. The 17th tip is adding a whiteboard to a channel. This is great in education or as well as corporate brainstorming anywhere you need to have a whiteboard pinned up in a channel. Now I'm here in a team. It has a few channels, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'll go to the dot, dot, dot menu and choose add channel. There's my channel name. Click add. So I have a new channel here. I'm going to go up to the plus right here and I'm just going to search for whiteboard. And there it is. So click whiteboard. I'll give it a name, project blue whiteboard and click save. Now, first off, it's going to ask, do I want to present or collaborate? And this is really handy. If I just want this to be a read only whiteboard that other people can't mess with, I'll choose present and click this. Now the whiteboard is read only for everyone else. And as you can see, only I can edit. And if I want to change that, I can go here to the gear and say other participants can edit. So if I want to make this read right a little bit later, I'll turn that on and close. Now you have that full whiteboard capability right here on a channel and it's always there. And maybe what you can do is do a brainstorm. So do something that looks like this. Here's an example of a whiteboard I filled out in a different channel. So I can go full screen just like this. I can zoom in, I can scroll around the page just like I would in a normal whiteboard. And again, over on the gear, after we're done editing, I can just say, you know what, now this is read only and no one else can mess with it. The 18th tip is adding emojis to your channels. And you can see right here that I've already added a bunch. I'm gonna add a new channel. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm gonna say add channel and we'll add one called study group. And I do the windows key and dot to pull up the emoji keyboard. And maybe I'll put a little graduation hat right there and I'll hit add. So it's added the study group channel with an emoji. A lot of times people will put the emoji in the front of the channel too. You can do it at the end or the front or the middle, doesn't matter. But adding emojis can make your channel more memorable and being able to distinguish it with your eyes more quickly. The 19th tip is file sharing improvements. So I can be in a chat or the main area and I can add a file and set permissions, just like in SharePoint. So I'm gonna click the little paper clip and I can choose from my OneDrive or I can upload. I'm going to choose to upload from my computer. I'm going to upload this PDF file here. Hit open. It'll attach this PDF to the message. Now I can choose this here and change it. So now just like in SharePoint, I can say, you know what? I just want this to be read only. I could set a password if I wanted. I could set our expiration date. I could block downloads of this file. All the same things I can do in SharePoint, but right here and I hit apply. Now this just says anyone with a link can view. So I can send this now in the chat. It sends it right into the chat with the right permissions. I can do the same thing in a team. So right here I can do new conversation. And at the bottom, I can do something similar where I click the paper clip. In this case, you know, I can choose OneDrive. I'll go here and select geography and I'll choose share a link. And same thing, I can click this and I can change it right here in that team's post. The 20th tip is dragging attachments from Outlook directly into Teams files. So I have my Outlook open here and there's an attachment. I'm going to drag it right from here and drop it over here in my Teams files. And it's uploaded that solar system deck directly into files. Just drag and drop. 
The 21st tip is adding apps to your app bar on the left side. So if I hit the three dot menu here, I can pick an app. Here's one for example, and I can right click and I can pin that. Let's find another app. There's Power BI. I can right click and I'll choose pin. And I can also search for apps. So maybe I want to find the tasks app. And here's task by planner and to do. Let's add this one as well. And I'll right click and pin that one. The 22nd tip is popping apps out of the app bar. So I've got my apps pinned here. Let's say I want to right click and pop out OneNote into its own window. I choose pop out app. And now OneNote has popped out into its own window and I can use it just the way I normally would with OneNote. If I want to right click and pop out tasks, same thing. There's my popped out tasks app. The 23rd tip is using OneNote inside of Teams. So I've got my OneNote app that I just pinned earlier. If I click here, there's some options up here. There's personal, there's recent. So these are a bunch of the other notebooks that I've recently used in here. I can click on Teams. And these show the notebooks that I have inside of Teams that are shared. So I have a PLC notebook. So a really nice way to navigate OneNote is right here on the app bar if you pin it. Now if I want to launch a notebook, I just click on it and it's going to launch it right into the OneNote web app. And there I've launched my Mike at Contoso notebook. The 24th tip is keyboard shortcuts in Teams. And there are a ton. Now to pull up all of them, do control period. This is the whole list and there are so many good ones. There's navigation shortcuts, messaging shortcuts, meeting shortcuts. A couple of my favorites that are really easy ones. I'm going to close this. Control one and control two, three, four, et cetera, will control the left app bar. So control one, I go to activities, control two, chat, control three, teams, and so forth. Assignments is control four and control five is calendar. Another nice one is control N, just like a new email. It takes you to a new chat. So if I do control N, it takes me here. The two line is flashing. If I want to type a message to Arden, I'm ready to go there. Another nice one is control E that takes you to the search bar. So if I want to look for messages, control E and then just hit a name and there's Ella. It'll find her messages really fast. The 25th and final tip are controlling notifications in teams and there's a lot of notifications. So in the upper right, I'm going to drop my profile name down and I will go to settings. You're going to see notifications here in the settings list. Go here. And there are a bunch and they've recently been reorganized to simplify. So things like missing activity mails, if you want to get those digests, you can get them all the time. You can turn them off or you can get them daily once every eight hours, etc. There's some great ones for appearance and sound teams and channels. This is a really important one. And a lot of times you might want to customize it. So if I go here, I can customize all the different things firing at mentions or team mentions or replies and likes and reactions. So all the teams and channel settings, are right in here. And another set of important ones are for chat, the way you get notified for chat, for meeting people and others. So explore the notifications and customize the way that you want to work best so Teams doesn't overdo it, but Teams doesn't underdo it. If you found this video useful, give it a like. Now, if you want to keep up with all the latest quick tip videos that I'll keep releasing, subscribe to my channel and then just ring the bell so you get notified for all the new videos that post.